What's up guys, I'm Dunmere, top 100 main tank player, and I'm going to show you guys how to play Reinhardt. Reinhardt did get some changes, now has two fire strikes instead of one. The shield got reduced to 1200 HP from 1600, and the charge is countable. Also, there is a, an additional amount of HP given, which is pretty neat, but yeah. So, how do you really play Reinhardt? Um, Reinhardt is a shield tank, right? But really, a brawler tank. The character did get, like like I said, some changes, but fundamentally he's still very much the same. You're really going to want to play for holding corners, forcing the enemy to like push into you and take a bad fight using that, but you're going to have a good solid amount of uh, advantage on that. When you do get an advantage like the one I have right now, you're going to want to walk in. You are essentially like a shepherd for your team, but um, so if you're not like paying attention to that concept, you're going to not get as much value as you should. So really it's all about stuffing these chokes, allowing like playing on your side of the chokes so that your team can see you um, and then make their Reinhardt walk or like their Reinhardt or whatever their tank is like walk forward into you so that they then have to uh, be seen by your full team and be like absolutely rolled by them. So like I said, um, this character is really about like shepherding your team and you're going to play like with a lot of focus for playing as if you're using the character to like control the flow of the game essentially this character like i said shepherds teams and so when you have an advantage you want to push with it when you don't have an advantage you want to like back up right obviously there's times to just die in the point but in general play it's really good to live as long as you can and not just like commit to die all the time so you really want to focus on like pushing when you have an advantage and backing up when you don't have an advantage using the choke points is going to be your like essentially your method of getting an advantage. You stuff them really hard and control corners. So the enemy has to push into you badly. And then when they do, you um, punish them, right? <laughs> like they're Nana right now, trying to back up a little bit. But we have the Kitsune ult up here, so we get to absolutely just do so much damage, man. That's crazy. I know it's all you guys. This character is absolutely just obscene. There's honestly just so much wildness you can do with that character. So when you're playing the character, you do really have to try and focus on like recognizing your um, like recognizing how the game's going. Whether you're like whether you're winning and you should push or whether you're losing and you should back up. Obviously, like if the team gets picks against you, it's time to back up or go forward or whatever. But a lot of it has to do with like your own shield health, um, what the enemy main tanks or like yeah, the enemy tanks like situation is in regards to that kind of stuff like for example this Ryan's lower than I am time to push that right to myself walk in I'm low HP so I want to make sure I'm just not really like taking too much damage right now although I'm kind of wondering where my my little healer buddies are but um yeah exactly like that so you can push just swinging when you're ready to like just absolutely deal a bunch of damage or you can focus on shielding right when you have a lot of spam characters it's good to push with the shield up when you're playing more for like when you're playing more for like um getting into the enemy as fast as possible you want to be looking to like the swing right or at least like be hopping like this so that you're going faster if you're being, if you're being sped by a lucio then you know you just kind of got to go right but it really depends on also how much damage you're taking if you're taking a bunch of damage from it you, you back up if you do have long range characters like I kind of do, you can hold high grounds like this, right? And shield them up here. When I shield my team up here, it gives them just like a pure advantage against an enemy team. Or at least, you know, forces the enemy Reinhardt to put up their shield to like make that even, right? My team get to sit here and attack them. Now you don't always want to just be like, you know, trying to do that. Just because of how it'll end up with you getting too much damage put into you, right? And you're losing your shield and all that sort of sort of stuff. But um, that is something you need to pay attention to. Gosh, I'm just being pushed so hard. And when, you know, when it gets to like that point, you just die in the cart. You are essentially like an anchor. So when you are dying, just just die in the cart. It slows you down, it slows them down. It'll get you extra fights, usually like at least once a game, you know, an extra fight that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So it's really, really consistently good to do. And my team's running in without me. <laughs> you know, you know how it, it, it ends up like that a lot of times. Guy is shattered, so I, you know, I obviously got to watch out for that. But, yeah, there you go. 
if you're patient and you don't play super aggressive when the enemy does have shatter that's you know usually going to net you the best value out of that there's times to go aggro there's times not to go aggro all that sort of stuff but um inting into the enemy getting too close to him is going to make it harder for you to like time it you essentially want to be able to like predict it while reacting so like, you prime yourself to be able to react to it pretty solidly and uh that'll give you like you know good value out of that all right guys so now i'm playing in an aggressive situation where we're currently looking to take the point back this changes it a lot from the defensive situation where you just like held a corner and then push forward or backwards based on your advantages or disadvantages now you have to push into space right you have to watch out for oh, okay you have to watch out for cooldowns and watch out for things that are like going to enable you to go forward into it for example i obviously literally can't push into this right so i'm getting shoved into the wall but i'm going to want to push forward into this and i'm going to want to do it in a situation where i'm not going to get hooked right so i'm going to make sure i'm playing to block this and i'm immediately going to the next corner like this so it's basically like using your cooldowns pushing with your shield using as little of your shield as possible but using like what you need essentially to push and get to the next corner you're always always playing from corners in the situation so i'm going to play right here to start with just so i can get some extra you know spam down range when they get too close i'm gonna play from this corner right here obviously they go over to the left one to watch that but um it is a little bit of something i have to be careful about obviously this roadhog is trying very very hard to do that i have to take care of that unfortunately i do get pushed away a little bit and i'm i'm super low so i have to just find a safe place to kind of chill out which yeah, is getting kind of difficult but yeah so I got pushed back here, and it's time for me to just try and like live for a while, long enough till my Ana eventually will finally heal me. So that I can get for a nice push. And now that I have my shield up, it's time to push back. Now the resources are in my favor, push forward, and I uh, I go ahead and get a nice little nice little shatter off. Charge on a build target or a sub target to secure that. And then back to my, my choke point. I could go for kills, but it's really good to just try and, you know, stuff, right? Like, there was four of my teammates there, so I was 100% certain that character was going to die. But, um, you're playing always, always towards choke points. The better control you have of a choke point, the more likely you're going to win in Reinhardt. If you're standing in open space, you're just going to get poked out from multiple angles and die. So Reinhardt also gets a lot of value from shielding its teammates. I'm talking mainly about just the damage dealing brawling portion of things, but you do get a lot of value shielding from your teammates. Not as much for four because you have less, but, you know, it go like that, right? So there's two real ways to do it. The first one is to put take your team through like a, a dangerous position or like a choke point, right? Or to shield them up on a high ground. So I don't really have too much on my team that can like do stuff with that. So I'm not going to try and focus on it too much. But if I had like an Ash or, Korea or like a Cassidy up there, I could sit there and, and hold that, that space, right? Again, just back to my corners your this reaper that's pushing in and we're losing so it's time to kite out just shield my team out hopefully they'll actually you know come with me right and yeah always look for just poke damage with your your fire strike they come back pretty quickly so so here i'm gonna have to shield my team like through a choke point i don't want to waste my shield before the fight starts but uh when we do finally get our team back i'm gonna just shove us through the choke point here which i'm gonna go for it now get him through this dangerous choke point right here against asaria and take this corner from them. Sorry, use one of our bubbles, and we're kind of getting fragged to the back line. Not only thing I can do about that, and that's kind of one of the weaknesses Reinhardt has right now, is that like you can only focus on what's in front of you. Reinhardt in Overwatch One had like a Eva or like a Zarya to like play on an angle and take care of that sort of stuff. You don't, right? So that means you can't be playing into angles nearly as much, which is a very difficult thing to do in this game um and so yeah but playing through high grounds is a very advantageous situation and so if i get my sojourn set up here i can walk with her to the high ground and shield her up here now i'm just gonna sit here because we're getting way more advantage because they're standing out in the open the shield's down obviously and we're just kind of not even spamming them at all but that would it would work right if we were actually were doing what we're supposed to be doing because you don't always have to be just, you know, running into someone to be, be getting value on Reinhardt. It's also about, like, using sightlines to your advantage and knowing when you want to take away sightlines from the enemy. Um, and for example, like, you know, taking and walking into the high ground there and 
taking their shield from them is how you do that. Or shielding through a choke like this, they are no longer threatening your team as you get there. And then you get to a safe spot, and then that's uh, that's how that goes. And then there's times where, you know, then from there you push, right? You take care of your team, and then you push. So Zarya just doesn't die ever anymore at all. All right, thanks for the name now, I guess. So, <clears throat> sometimes there's not the best choke points to like stuff on Reinhardt. Um, this choke point's not too good just because it will come above you. I want to play more on the open here to like shield my team and give them an advantage that way. And then when my when the enemies actually do push into me or like get into a vulnerable position, I'll I'll stuff them better. I'm gonna play back from here. Zari is uh, getting the open. I'm gonna take her and push her back a little bit. But I'm not gonna go too crazy about it because, like I said, they're probably getting on top of me pretty soon. Yep, just like that. I'm gonna back up, hold the space. Any area that my my team's in is is pretty safe here. Hi, back to the point. And, uh, you know, I ended up we ended up dying there. Reinhardt is honestly not gonna be super strong in a lot of situations. It's not got nearly as much just raw capability that it used to. Especially on maps like this. Like, this wasn't the best Rhine map to start with, but like I said, you don't have that off tank to help take care of your team. So, if your team's not winning, like, 1v1s on things off angling on them, you're going to get um, you're gonna get punished a little bit. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show Reinhardt on a better map for Reinhardt. There's still some open sight lines, but uh, it's pretty straight on, so that's really where you get the most value out of the character. One where I'm not getting off angled on so much, and I can show you, like, actually the advantages of what I'm doing. But right here, you always want to look up and take these like halfway points. Since I'm right here, the team is going to have a really hard time pushing through this choke point. And now we have like a lot more of the map controlled because the enemy can't walk through me, right? But I don't want to walk too far into that. When the enemy peaks, I'm going to give my team an advantage like this. Just shield up here. Obviously, when like a Reaper sneaks up on you, you go for that. But anytime I'm using like my shield to give my team a time to spam, I'm giving them a time to like just win any sort of spam range damage duels in that circumstance and in that time the enemy will get softened up and then you turn around or then you push them right so that's what that's what the goal is here actually I canceled my thing i <laughs> think my keyboard is really sensitive and back to choke points the harder of a choke point you can stuff them in the better this is kind of like an okay situation. You can stuff them to start with, give your team like a little bit of an advantage, right? Like let your team just peek into what would normally be dangerous just to protect them. And yeah. For shatters, I really do like to look them early. Especially if you're playing in something like this, right? Like even though we don't get like a full kill off this, this should secure us an advantage. I mean, obviously we really, really should have been able to kill that, right? But um we we didn't so on Reinhardt when you are getting pushed you just kite back to the next choke point you know the next choke point you can stay in you just have like an idea of like where you came from where you're gonna go next and then when you finally get an advantage you walk and press w into that you have to be careful about getting like too too happy with your advantage because advantages turn into neutral situations pretty quickly too i want to get to this corner I'm gonna go up to the high ground here to stuff them And we die here, so that's that. Something I didn't really get to do because my shield got melted so fast. Um, and I was trying to contest like the Zarya and the Reaper on point. When that soldier came onto the high ground there, if you just walk up there and just shield him off, even if you're not providing like raw damage, which would kill you, you're getting a huge um You're getting a huge amount of just like damage reduction going on. Like it at the directly at the source, not just on your team. So they can't I can't be as flexible with it. Advantage pops up, we push, that's two kills, you, you definitely push those, you know. When you do get kills on the enemy team though, it's usually better to just like, slow things down. Now we got two right, so the fight's like 1-1. One, one. But the higher rank you get, people will start punishing you for pushing too hard. So when you do get a kill, it's usually best to just slow down, build up a little bit. Um, give your team time to heal up, give whatever whatever you killed on their team give your counterpart the time to just take advantage of that so if you killed a support you just slow it down and then your support 
is able to put some more damage out. Your support is able to heal some more. And if you're like if it was like a DPS, for example, you now have a DPS advantage. So you just um, you just take care of that, too. Like this, you can go for frags, but just slow down, back up on your team and um, you'll you'll secure wins. Like you don't want to throw away your wins just because you got too excited and tried to push too hard. You know, and then at that time, like a tracer snuck in and fragged your back line at that time period. So. If you're looking for some more Overwatch 2 content, then make sure to check out these videos I have right here. Like I said, I'm a top 100 Overwatch player, so I have lots of videos and things to share with you guys.